Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. So we're gonna go through the best CPU cooler for Ryzen 2022. We'll cover what you need to know and give you specific product recommendations for each of the CPUs and every budget level. If you get value of the video, please give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. AMD has released a number of new CPUs. So let's briefly go over them. Of course, we have the originally released Ryzen 5600X, 5800X, 5900X, and 5950X. Of those CPUs, only the 5600X came with the included Ray Stealth box cooler. More of those included coolers later in the video. Since that time, AMD has released two Ryzen 5000 APUs in the Ryzen 5600G and 5700G, both of which also came with included box coolers. On April 4th of 2022, AMD releases the Ryzen 5 5600, a slightly downclocked version of the 5600X, and the Ryzen 5500, which is a 5600G without the integrated graphics, as well as three more Ryzen 4000 CPUs, all of which include the Wraith Stealth cooler. Then we have two more CPUs without included coolers in the Ryzen 5700X, a slightly downclocked version of the Ryzen 5800X, and the Ryzen 5800X 3D, with the addition of vCache and some changes to the IHS, which makes it not overclockable, but also may run hotter than the original 5800X. We'll recommend coolers for all of these CPUs. So why is getting the best CPU cooler for Ryzen important, and in particular, for Ryzen 5000 CPUs? Well, the basics are that the faster the CPU runs, the more performance it gives, but also the more heat it generates. What made Ryzen CPUs innovative was that unlike the Intel CPUs of old, which only boosted for a set amount of time, even at stock, Ryzen CPUs were designed to boost performance indefinitely, while under load and convert as much available cooling into higher clock frequencies for more performance. With the introduction of Precision Boost Overdrive, something I strongly recommend all Ryzen users enable in the system BIOS if they don't plan to manually overclock, AMD was able to push Ryzen performance even higher, again, as long as the CPU had additional thermal headroom. The Ryzen 5000 CPUs took this a step further, pushing this additional performance much closer to the maximum thermal limit of the CPU. Now, while there are diminishing returns, of course, in this process, providing a solid basis of cooling will increase the CPU performance. The other factor is noise, where higher capacity coolers generally produce less fan noise than lower performance coolers because they just aren't working as hard. One thing to watch out for when buying a cooler is the listed TDP, or thermal design power, listed by AMD for each of its Ryzen CPUs. Now this is a very complicated topic and Gamers Nexus did a 38 minute deep dive video into it. So I'll leave a link down in the video description below. But the short answer is that AMD's TDP of their Ryzen 5000 CPUs aren't comparable to TDPs by Intel or even cooler manufacturers. In fact, AMD doesn't even use power in the equation to define its TDP and it ends up being more of a marketing term rather than a helpful specification. So even though it seems like you can just match up a 105 watt TDP CPU like the Ryzen 5800X with a 105 watt TDP cooler, that isn't necessarily the case. Let's talk liquid versus air coolers. I have a whole video on liquid all-in-one coolers, also called AIOs or water coolers, that covers everything that you need to know in depth. So I'll leave a link to that down in the video description if you want a deeper dive. Let's cover the basics. Liquid AIOs come sized according to how many fans they have and how big the fans are. I do not recommend single fan liquid AIOs as they only have the same performance as budget tower air coolers and tend to cost at least double the price. 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid coolers, named because they have a radiator sized for 220 millimeter fans, are the most common. 280 millimeter AIOs, which have two 140 millimeter fans and 360 millimeter AIOs are also quite common. And the biggest AIOs are 420 millimeter beasts. When deciding between a liquid AIO and air coolers for Ryzen, there are a couple key considerations. The first is price. Air coolers at the budget level and mid range give you more price to performance than liquid coolers simply because the price floor for liquid AIO coolers is higher as they're more expensive to produce. The second thing to keep in mind is overall performance. At the high end, liquid coolers will outperform air coolers, although the big air coolers will recommend are fairly close in terms of high end cooling performance. The next thing is aesthetics. Liquid coolers tend to be sleeker and less bulky than air coolers 
and they come equipped with better looking RGB and even LCD features, so they're typically the choice if you really want to show off your build. Finally, in terms of lifespan, air coolers being just a hunk of thin metal with a couple of fans on them will last as long as their fans last, which can be quite a long time. Liquid AIOs, even the best ones, will eventually succumb to permeation, which you can think of essentially as micro evaporation over time of the liquid inside to the point where the AIO will need to be refilled. Liquid AIOs will keep performing if properly maintained until the pump eventually fails, often about six to eight years or even longer. Personally, I go with budget air coolers on budget builds and with anything mid-range and higher, I typically go with an AIO simply for the aesthetics, but I certainly understand for those who prefer air coolers instead. What about the Race Stealth box cooler included with many of the lower core count CPUs? Well, the good news is that this cooler is all you need to get started with the Ryzen 4000 CPUs, the Ryzen 5500, 5600, 5600X, 5600G, and even the 5700G. That being said, on the higher performance Ryzen 5600, 5600X, as well as the 5600G and 5700G, there is some performance to be gained by going to at least a budget tower air cooler to give additional performance and reduce the overall fan noise. And if you plan to overclock any of these CPUs, then investing in a budget tower air cooler, it's likely a must. So how do you size the cooler? Well, I've come up with a little bit of a chart here for all the CPUs. We're gonna go through all the various types of coolers and I'll leave a link to this down in the video description. This should give you a generalized, and I emphasize generalized view of what kind of cooler you're looking for. Remember, some coolers, uh, they're the same type of cooler, cool better than others. Let's go through it really quickly. For the CPUs, if you've got one of the Ryzen 4000 CPUs, if you've got a Ryzen 5500, include a box cooler on that is absolutely fine. If you wanna do any overclocking or just maybe for, for noise or slightly lower thermals, certainly can pick up a budget air tower cooler. Anything else, uh, mid-range air, high-end air, all-in-one liquid cooler, just know you can do it. It's just overkill. For the 5600G, 5700G, uh, I would, think that the included box cooler, absolutely fine. Although I would recommend jumping up to a budget air tower cooler. In our testing with a 5600G, for instance, we found slightly better performance going to the budget tower cooler. And certainly if you want to overclock that CPU, go right ahead. Anything else for the 5600G, really kind of overkill. 5700G, I think about, about the same thing. But for the 5600 and 5600X, these are kind of still world-class gaming CPUs. Uh, the included box cooler is fine-ish, but I would strongly recommend at least a budget air tower cooler uh, for standard operation for precision boost overdrive or some overclocking. Mid-range air, if you want to super heavily overclock this thing, the 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, absolutely fine. Uh, you're buying it for primarily for the looks, for the lower uh, noise and the slightly better thermals. Anything above a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, total overkill. Stick to 240s in that range. 5800X, uh, this is where things, and higher, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. If you're doing this, the regular vanilla version of the 5800X, very similar to the 5600X, I would just kind of bump everything up one, one tick on there. So I think the budget tower air cooler is probably fine. The mid-range air is what I would recommend on that. I'd look at a high-end air if you're gonna massively overclock that thing. 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler also recommend. That's, I think, the probably the best use case for a 5800X uh, in terms of also including the aesthetics. 280 starts to get in a, a slight overkill. Anything higher than that, Super overkill. 5900X, 5950X, I've grouped these together. They are essentially, despite one having four more cores, I found that in our systems, the heat loads perform about the same. So I would look at, you know, uh, mid-range air is kind of fine for stock. I would really recommend a high-end air cooler, uh, including overclocking. 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid coolers work fine. In fact, our 5900X, uh, we, we really pushed with precision boost overdrive with a 240 millimeter one. I would recommend thinking about a 280, possibly a 360, but the 240 has worked out fine for uh, both those uh, CPUs. 5800X 3D. Now remember, you cannot overclock this CPU. I would go mid-range air is what I would recommend if you want to go air cooler. Uh, certainly go higher end for noise and thermals. The 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler is where I would really recommend 
also 280. I think a 360 or a 420 absolute total overkill for that CPU. All right, starting off at the budget level. Now remember, links to everything are gonna be down in the video description. You don't have to write all this down and check out those links instead, especially in your region as pricing is gonna vary widely. And at the budget level, we're mostly dealing with three to four heat pipe tower air coolers. Now I know in some regions, they're not necessarily gonna be available for you. That's why we're gonna go through a number of them and roughly all about the same performance. And I would consider these for any of the CPUs like less than a 5800X. Let's start off with the Deepcool Gamex 400 V2. Now this is a great air cooler, very easy installation. Comes with a blue LED light. There's also one with a red LED light. I know some people aren't crazy about that, but if you're looking for something with a little bit of uh, RGB to it, this is definitely it, or LED in this case, a blue LED for $25. Very, very hard to beat the price to performance on this cooler. And this is really gonna be a favorite of a lot of budget builders. Another great favorite is the Vitru V5. Now it comes in both white and black, and it comes with an RGB fan for only $29. Really good performer overall, and it looks really nice, I have to say. And at $29, it's the only cooler that you're gonna see among these that's offering RGB for such a low price. So if this is available in your region, it's definitely one to check out. Of course, we've got the id Cooling SE224 XT black. It also comes in white and it also comes in just a kind of a, a metallic finish as well. They all run for about $28 to $30. We've used these in a number of builds, a 5600G build. We use it in an i5-12400 build. Again, those kind of class of CPUs, this is gonna work really, really well. And this looks really phenomenal, especially if you're really in love with the Cooler Master Hyper 212, which we'll go through in a second. Fortunately, that cooler tends to sell for almost double the price. This is a really good replacement. And of course, the SE224 XT also comes in an RGB version. Right here, it's going for $29 right now on Amazon. Speaking of the Hypermaster 212, listen, this is this is an oldie but a goodie. It's been around forever. It's a great performer. It looks phenomenal. My only beef with it is that it's kind of ballooned in price up to about $44, $45. Used to sell more in the $30 range, $30, $35, and it was okay at that price point. Now there's a number of different versions of this. There's the original Hyper 212 Evo look to it for $45. There's the V2, which they recently re-released re for $42. The fan on this is probably a little bit better. I think they also changed the heat pipe design a little bit to set back the cooler away from memory uh, stick clearance. A good performer, but $42, a little bit more expensive. I I know in some markets it does sell for a better price. And then I know for you Noctua fans out there, we've got the Noctua NH U12S Redux. This is a great cooler. It just tends to be more on the expensive side. Now, some folks don't mind paying for that because Noctua has a phenomenal reputation. This is a standard, uh, t just like all the rest, standard tower, four heat pipes on it. Uh, absolutely good performer though, uh, probably one of the best among the ones that we're looking at here. That being said, uh, in this class, the CPU don't often need the slightly higher performance it brings, but if you absolutely love Noctua and you like the look of this, $50 is not that bad. And I'll round it out with the Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Duo. I know some people absolutely love this cooler, and I gotta tell you, uh, the, the push-pull system, it doesn't give as much as the Arctic P12 fans do. These Arctic P12 are amazing fans. They, great cooler overall. Stands just about as tall and just about as wide as the other coolers, but does give, tends to give a little bit better performance and especially a little bit better on the noise uh, in terms of the overall noise required to push uh, push that much cooling. $52 here, we're get, definitely getting more expensive. We're almost double the original cooler that we looked at here, but it does come in a number. It comes in all white. It comes in kind of a racing black and red. And if you don't need the push pole, if you're just looking for the cool aesthetic with it and you don't want to spend the full amount of money, you can just get the 34 Esports non-duo version of a single fan will work perfectly fine for about $38 instead. Let's jump into the mid-range coolers. Now, if you skipped here, all the links to everything are down in the video description. And we're gonna start off with a great performing unit. This is the id Cooling SE226 XT. This is the ARGB version for $49. There's an all black non-RGB version for $45. For $4, I would get the RGB version of it. Now these coolers are gonna be capable of cooling anything from a 5900X on down. Maybe even a 5950X, as long as you're gonna run that thing at stock and you're not gonna heavily overclock it. I've seen great uh, performance out of these, primarily on the Intel side, because when Alder Lake launched, these were one of the few coolers that already came LGA 1700 ready. So I've seen them cool on i7-12700K. Uh, that's been overclocked pretty, pretty well. $50 
really, really hard to beat. Now, just one thing to remember as we get into this class of coolers, one thing you have to think about is the memory clearance on them. The nice thing about this is it's slightly set back as you can see the slight bend of the heat pipes there in order to give extra room for your memory modules. So that's really, really nice. And remember, you can always add an additional fan to this if you want additional cooling on it. But overall, for $49, for the same price as some of the budget air towers, this is gonna provide substantially more cooling. Another cooler that you can often find in a lot of markets, especially markets where there's not a lot of choice, is the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B. This is a really, really capable CPU cooler. In the States, I would probably pass this over for either the, uh, the SE226 or some of the coolers that we have coming up. But I know in other markets, in India, or the Philippines, other places, this cooler is readily available and it's a really good performer. It also comes in an all black version if you can find that as well. The fan on this is nice and quiet. And like some of the other ones, this also has a slight setback to the heat pipes so that it will actually clear those memory modules, which is really, really helpful. Overall, about the same kind of performance as we just saw with the SE226 XT, but for $50 and available in a lot of markets. Let's jump into the high performance coolers. And I really struggled with this because a lot of these coolers I would normally have placed into the mid range, but they do so well. They actually out compete some of the older one coolers that we've come to think as the highest performance. And let's start off with the current king of the hill, which is Deepcool's AK620. This is a dual tower, amazing air cooler, uh, just tested not too long ago by Gamers Nexus, pretty much just absolutely demolished the competition. Now, some of the coolers like the NHD15, it beat by like a half a degree. So, but for $65, that's pretty amazing given the fact that it's competing with coolers that cost almost 50% more than it does. Uh, Deepcool tells me they are going to come out with an all white version of it. So for those of you out there who uh, love theme builds, check it out for that. The one thing I really like about it is it's got a really clean finish on the top of it. If you're into the industrial design, that's great. I got some coolers coming up for you. But if you're looking for something a little cleaner, a little sleeker, this is definitely a cooler to check out. It outperformed literally every other cooler in both noise and thermal. So what more do you want for $65? The other cooler in this price class really is the Scythe Fuma 2. This is another phenomenal air cooler. And again, you can use this to cool anything up to the 5950X and feel very, very comfortable about it. You won't get as good thermals as you would with the, uh, the deep cool unit or some of the upcoming ones, but very, very close. And I know in a lot of markets, this is readily available. Again, the deep cool is not everywhere just yet, but if you're looking for something that's readily available, great noise, great thermals. Scythe Fuma 2 is a really phenomenal unit, and it's got that same setback, so you don't have to worry about the memory clearance. And that front fan is actually a thin fan, if you can take a look at that just giving you that extra little bit of clearance, especially if you want to populate all four dim slots. Let's round this out with a couple of really good performance coolers, which is the Be Quiet Dock Rock Pro 4. This is $90. I have a feeling we're going to see the price on this come down a little bit. It's great in terms of noise, great in terms of thermals, has a really nice kind of uh, machined look to the top, another, another really clean aesthetic, although it does have the bumps on top of it. If you're not a fan of the, the heat pipe caps, maybe go with the deep cool unit instead. But this looks really, really phenomenal to me. And, you know, it still performs very, very well for $90. Then, of course, we've got the Noctua NHD15. This is kind of the granddaddy of big air coolers. But I will say it's been slightly dethroned now. And for $109, the price to performance on this not as great. But I know some people absolutely love Noctua, will not do anything except Noctua. Noctua's got a stellar reputation. They support their coolers for many, many, many years. They'll send you new mounting kits, everything. So if you're looking for that long-term investment and you're thinking Octua, this is definitely the big air cooler to get. There is the absolute brown one, uh, the non-black one for about $10 less. Yeah, it's a little bit of a price saving. If that's your aesthetic, that's great. The one thing I will say with this, this is a very, very big cooler. It can actually bump into the top GPU slot on some motherboards, on some AM4 motherboards. So just double check the tolerances uh, in the case and everything bef uh, well, on the motherboard and for the cooler before you buy it. The other thing is it does have a, quite a bit of a problem with uh, front memory clearance. That being said, those fans can actually be moved up and they're big enough that they'll actually cover pretty much the whole thing, even if you do move them up. Again, if you want the former top of the line, this is it, $110, still a great air cooler.
Let's jump into all-in-one liquid coolers. Now, if you've just jumped ahead into chapter time, all the links to everything are going to be down in the video description. And we're going to start off at the absolute budget level with an amazing cooler. It's the id Cooling Zoom Flow 240X ARGB cooler. This is a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. It's got great effects on the pump head. It's got nice RGB on it. Also comes in all white if you're looking for an all white version. $70, that is really tough to beat. I think the all white version is maybe a couple of dollars more. Actually, no, it's $69 as well. Great, it comes in 240 and it also comes in a 360 millimeter uh, version of it right now selling for $89 for the 360 millimeter version of it. Super, super cheap. Not the highest performance, uh, I will say that. It looks phenomenal, and if you're looking to really bling up your build and provide a lot more cooling than a budget tower air cooler for like maybe a 5600X, a 5800X, the 240 millimeter version is definitely something to take a look at. Of course, we've got a number of coolers in this budget area and the pricing does fluctuate quite a bit depending on what region, what market you're in, what time of year it is, and who's got a special on. The other ones I would take a look at Enermax Liquimax 3. This is a 240 millimeter uh, RGB cooler. Really, really nice unit. I know some people don't like Enermax coolers because they had a problem with a Threadripper cooler a couple of years ago where they were using some bad solution in them. Uh, that, to my understanding, is not extended to these coolers. I continue to recommend a lot of these. And overall, for $80, if you're looking for something cheap with a little bit of bling that's accessible in a lot of markets, this is a great cooler. Similarly, another cooler that just seems to be absolutely everywhere is the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L RGB V2. There's also an ARGB version of this as well. $78 right now for the RGB version. That's a little bit more than I would typically want to pay for it. But I've often seen this go on sale for as low as $50. Just another one to check out the current pricing on if you're looking for a $240 millimeter budget all-in-one liquid cooler. Let's talk the absolute highest performance liquid coolers right now, all-in-one liquid coolers, and let's start off. There's basically two brands you're looking for here. The number one is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. Now, this is the 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. This would be phenomenal for high core count CPUs. You can, of course, look at the 360, and even they have a 420 millimeter uh, liquid cooler. That might be a little bonkers. You're gonna have to get a special case for that but the 280 will fit in a lot of cases, as will the 360. Even the 240 is very, very good. And I love that Arctic is now allowing both all black units as well as ARGB units, which is phenomenal. Even on the 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, which I pretty much begged them for last time. $119 for the ARGB unit on the 280 millimeter unit. This is really, really good deal. I mean, if we talk about the other coolers that are kind of around uh, this price point, like the Corsair uh, 8 series coolers and others, the Arctic beats them and it looks really nice. Now, the one thing the Arctic doesn't really have is it doesn't have any effects on the pump head itself. It's got the little VRM fan on it that kind of does almost something, uh, nothing to really buy this cooler for. But if you're looking for a cooler that also has similar levels of high performance and has some cooler pump head effects, then take a look at the EK AIO. This is the 240 right now. They also sell a 280 version. They also sell these in all black for about $20 less than the uh, RGB versions. So this one right here, this is the 240 millimeter one, $125. The, the simple basic black one with no RGB sells for $99. Great coolers, uh, again, between Arctic and EKAIO, there's really no difference. You can flip a coin in terms of performance. It really comes down to your aesthetic. Which one do you like better? Some people like this with a, the pump head. Some people like the other one. Overall, though, if you're looking to cool the toughest CPUs out there, like the 5950X that you want to really, really push to the max with an overclock, I'd look at a 280 or a 360, one of these, and call it a day. Let's jump into the coolers that bring the bling, and that these aren't the necessarily the highest performing coolers, they're all good coolers, but they bring the bling in a way that none of the other coolers really do. And let's start off, we'll start at the low end and we'll, we'll work our way up, the low end. Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240 Illusion. This comes in white, it comes in black, it comes in a 360 as well as a 240 millimeter uh, version of it. And we use the 240 millimeter white one in our 5600X Best Gaming build. It was, it's an amazing cooler. It sits next to me, I've used it a ton. I can never even hear the pump running. I can never hear the fans running on this thing. And I gotta tell you, the pump head looks absolutely amazing. These pictures do not do it justice. I've never quite seen the translucent dome on this thing like I have in any other cooler. And the 
Halo fans on this are, they're just fantastic. I think really Cooler Master hit it out of the park with these Halo fans. They're not even that much money if you want to buy an additional one for the rear exhaust so you get three matching in there, which is what we did. They look phenomenal. $130, not that bad a price to pay for something that looks this nice. Of course, there's a lot of great looking coolers out there that still perform well. The Corsair H100 series is definitely to be mentioned here. There are a number of different kind of iterations of this but overall if you're looking for the rgb on the fans and the nice effect rgb on the pump head with a corsair logo the h100i elite capolix is a good one 150 a little more on the pricey side now but if you're a corsair fan and in particular if you want the corsair software in here the iq software to control everything it's it's a really really great pickup i can't argue with that and it's a phenomenally performing unit too, $150. Let's talk about coolers that come with an LCD palm head screen. And we'll start at the cheaper one and we'll go all the way up. The Aorus Water Force X 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler has the LCD screen on the pump head, looks phenomenal. We used a similar cooler, the one with the mirrored pump head in our 5900X build and our 5950X build. Both of them performed really, really well, both the 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler as well as the 280 millimeter one. And this just adds the pump head feature to it. Really, really good, $189. Now there are two slight downsides to this, although you're saving quite a bit of money versus its competitors. One is that you're gonna have to use Gigabyte's version of the RGB control software. Some people don't like that. If that's a deal breaker for you, I've got some other things for you. I use it all the time, it's not a big deal for me. The other issue with the pump is that when you actually start the PC up, it will spin up the fans to 100% speed for about three seconds. Not a big deal if you know, especially if you know it's coming and you get used to it. Uh, if that's a deal breaker for you, I've got a couple other units. One of those units, of course, is the NZXT Kraken. This is the Z53 RGB version. 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. And this is really kind of where the LCD screen uh, originated, right? A NZXT. Now the RGB on these fans, as a personal kind of preference opinion, you can decide for yourself. I don't like the ring lights. I wish they had just gone straight RGB with a whole fan instead of just doing the rings or maybe do the rings in additional fans. Not sure about that. But if this, if you think this looks amazing, this is probably the cooler for you. Obviously NZXT has uh, their own control software for this. Uh, their own kind of uh, RGB environment on it. And some people just go gaga for this cooler. It's a great performer. The Z53 is the 240, the Z63 is the 280, and the Z73 is the 360 millimeter. They start at $242 and go up. And of course, the relatively new arrival on the, the LCD pump head uh, scene is the Corsair IQ1. This one starts at 259 for the 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler uh, with the LCD pump head screen. The thing's amazing. I mean, look, you can do like cartoons with it. You just do whatever you want. And the thing I like about this one, maybe over the other ones, is it just seems like it's a little bit bigger than the other ones and it's a little bit more visible in the case itself. So if you're looking to make a huge statement, you know, yeah, spending another $60, $70 over the Gigabyte, uh, that's, uh, that's maybe a tall order for some. But if you can, I think this is probably the one to get if you're just gonna max everything out. 240 millimeter one starts at 259 and they go up from there. If you got value of the video, give a like. It makes a big difference to the channel. And of course, remember to subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, thank you for joining me on the best coolers for Ryzen in 2022. If you're looking for even more Ryzen content, then check out this video right here. This is the best motherboards for Ryzen in 2022. Just re-released it. Got to check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.